We've been meeting some of the established characters here in Diamond City. We've already met Mo and Nick and Henry Cook, but now it's time to meet the doctors of Diamond City and the Bobrov brothers, the bartenders in charge of the Dugout Inn. We find the Dugout Inn by going down the alleyway just south of the Diamond City Market. Just outside, we'll hear some of the bar's patrons talking about the quality of the food. Can't believe you eat that food. Only one thing worth buying in the dugout inn, and that's the booze. Man's gotta eat. What can I say? A real Diamond City boy eats at the noodle stand. This bar and restaurant is built into one of the stadium's old dugouts. Just outside, we see a couple of ruined lockers and cement blocks and a big sign to dugout in. Heading inside, we hear the proprietor try to tell a story to one of his patrons. Redim, I need to talk. Just a minute, Yefim. I am in the middle of the story. So then, I am crossing river, right? Wearing nothing but a smile when the out comes the most dangerous of all sea monsters, a mire lurk. A mire lurk? Come on. That's like two out of 10 points of danger tops. Now, if you want to talk something really deadly. Vadim! Oh, I forgot you were there, Yafim. What is it? You know what? Never mind. I'll handle it myself. Overhearing this initial conversation tells us a lot about the Bobrov brothers. Vadim appears to be the dominant personality between the two, and when he heads back around to the other side of the bar, we can start a chat. <clears throat> See this bar? I killed a man for it. <laughs> no, no, I kid, I kid. <coughs> he is dead, though. <laughs> now, let me know when you're ready to order. So, this your bar? Damn straight it is. My brother Yefim and I make the best moonshine in the entire Commonwealth. We call it Bobrov's Best. Had to start renting out rooms just so customers had a place to safely pass out after drinking it. <laughs> so he makes his own moonshine. Well, we better check some out. I'll take a look. Sure. That's what I like to hear. We find this home-brewed moonshine, Bob Rob's best moonshine. It gives us one charisma and one strength at the cost of one intelligence, and it increases our maximum HP by 25 for a short period of time. For the moonshine, they use old bottles of Rooster's Rum. We find these bottles of Rooster's Rum all over the wasteland, and they're even a component of the Nuka Bomb Drop. Looks like Vadim and Yefim just collect these empty bottles and fill them with their own moonshine. We can then head on over and talk with his brother Yafim. The brothers like to stand and smoke in this smoking spot, and it looks like they also have a little hotel business. Uh, <clears throat> oh, a customer. Need a room? What's the story with this place? Not much to say. We sell food, drink, and rooms. Mainly for traders that come to the area. My brother Vadim runs the bar. Scarlet's our waitress, and she helps me keep the rooms clean. As much as they can be. Deal. You're in room two, just through the door. We can use this opportunity to explore. Heading through the door that he motioned to, we find a long hallway. Opening the door to room number two, we find a large room, but it's sparsely decorated. We can sleep in the bed and safely store our belongings. Turning right and going around the corner, we see a big broken Nuka-Cola machine with no Nuka-Cola inside. At the end of the hallway is room number three. I'm not sure who's occupying this room, but the containers and bed are set to owned. Retracing our steps and going down the hallway, we see that it opens up to a door that leads back to the main bar. Here we find an empty Etotronic against the wall, and to the east we find a door marked number one. But this isn't a hotel room, this is an office. The Bobra brothers have a ham radio on a desk, but interestingly no terminal, so they must do their business by pen and paper. The customers tend to congregate around the couches and chairs in the middle of the room. Here we find a Porta Diner, and it's just not my luck today. And turning down the hallway, we find a bounties board. Here we can pick up bounties earlier in the game. Sadly, later in the game, we don't find many bounties here. We can then chat with some of the patrons, see what they have to say. Newcomer, huh? Talk to Abbott at the wall if you want a history lesson. You read the paper? Damn sense. Hiding among us. God, even the sky isn't safe. Did you see that blimp thing? The Brotherhood of Steel? Who are they? The wall's sure looking good lately. Guess Abbott found some more paint. Whatever it is, leave me out of it. Don't bother, pal. I ain't seen nothing, I ain't heard nothing. If you don't live here, you ain't nobody. Got it? 
Whatever you want, I ain't got time. Many of the other merchants like to hang out at the dugout inn, including Becky Fallon. Hey, Becky. Ever been up in the stands? Let's just say they can afford a lot of clothes. And it's here where we'll find Darcy Pembroke, depending upon how we resolved the quest between she and her husband. I don't know what Paul did, but Henry won't even let me in his bar anymore. Most of these guys have standard Diamond City dialogue, but we do find one man with unique dialogue. His name is Hawthorne. Hey, hey. what's your story? Mercenary? Caravan guard? Wrong on both tries. Hmm. I can usually spot a higher gun on the first look. Maybe you just give off an armed and dangerous vibe. Blood bullets and money, all the way. Right? Well, maybe not so much the blood part if you can help it, but I hear you. I try to protect people, if that's what you mean. Hey, I'm all for the noble road. You know, as long as I'm getting paid. And maybe if there's a beautiful brunette involved. What's your name? Hawthorne. And you are definitely from out of town. I know every settlement from both sides of the Charles River, and I've never seen you. Anyway, I'm just kicking back and sharing stories while I'm between things. I've been all over, seen vaults, pre-war ruins, and plenty of monsters. You've been to a vault? Yeah. Ever heard of Vault 81? They're standoffish, but every once in a while, they'll let new people in. Let's hear your best monster story. I'm from Diamond City. You want to talk something really scary? It's the Institute in their sense. Don't go to University Point. Trust me. You don't want to know what they're capable of. So you explore old ruins? Last place I was going to check out was Salem. Real old town far to the north. Never made it, though. Got a bad feeling about that area. See you around, Hawthorne. Yeah, take it easy. Happy to share the benefit of my experience. As long as you don't mind me glossing over all the embarrassing parts, you know. And that's really all we get from Hawthorne for the rest of the game. He's useful for pointing out a few interesting locations on our Pip-Boy map earlier in the game. The waitress of the dugout inn is Scarlet. We find her either walking around taking orders, cleaning, or smoking cigarettes. Hey, Scarlet. Hi there. You can order drinks and food here or at the bar. Who owns this bar, anyway? The Bobrov brothers picked this place up a few years ago. Uh, Vadim Bobrov is the loud one, Yefim Bobrov is the quiet one, and I'm the one that has to listen to them argue with each other all day. Just browsing for now. Take your time. We find a door to the northeast, which leads to the Bobrov brothers' private room. Here on one of their shelves, we find a holotape, Join the Railroad. Wake up, Commonwealth. Since they're not your enemy, they are victims in this war as well. True, they were created by the Institute, but they were created as slaves. Thinking, feeling, and dreaming beings, utterly oppressed by their tyrannical masters. So join with us in fighting the real enemy, the Institute. Join the Railroad. When you're ready for that next step, don't worry, we'll find you. To the south, we find another small section to this room. We see beer, scrap, and a few minor chems laid about, and a novice locked wall terminal. We have to be careful when hacking this so that we don't anger Vadim and Yafim. Inside, we see that it's humorously called the Dugout Inn box. <laughs> and we find four notes to Vadim. Please clean up. Vadim. Please at least do your part of the cleaning and keep the bar tidy. Scarlet already cleans half the rooms, the tables, and the patio. I do the rest. May I remind you that I am not mother, yes? Yafim. In the next one, to Vadim, please lower voice at night. Vadim, we are running a hotel, yes? People pay to sleep here. Is closing the bar at the same time every night not possible? Sometimes guests still hear you laughing with bar customers well into the early morning. You are anything but quiet. At least keep it down if you insist on serving drinks at all hours. Yefim. And the next one. To Vadim, please pay your bills. Vadim, I do not mind paying bills for our business, but I am not your accountant. Every time you go shopping, you tell merchant to bill the dugout. Then, I have to pay them off or we both lose everything. We are in this together, yes? Then why am I the only one who keeps personal finance from professional finance? Yefim. And in the final one, to Vadim, read these notes. Vadim, I try to talk. You brush me off. You say put what I want on the terminal and you will get to it. But then you never read what I write. Can you not understand how maddening this is? You will not even read this, will you? Father was right. Heavy is the back that carries two loads. Yefim. Poor Yefim. The brothers may be twins, but they have completely different personalities. 
Sadly, I think before Vadim will change his behavior, he'll have to suffer the consequences for his poor life choices. Heading out, we can finish exploring the dugout in. We find a small kitchen made from the old dugout showers, but we don't find any food, no store of goods. It's incredibly sparse. Heading out and turning west, we see some barriers set up. To the north is a laundry room. Not sure if these work. We don't find any clothes inside, just a couple of bobby pins and a wrench, strangely enough. And then down the southern hallway, we find an advanced lock door. Thankfully, this hallway is pretty secluded. We can get away with picking it. Inside, we find a small stack of chems, some ammo, and a little bit of scrap. Nothing terribly exciting, though I suppose it's a great way to get a hunting rifle at earlier levels. Well, we've met the guys that can cause addictions. Now let's meet the guys that can cure addictions. To do so, we need to head to the marketplace and then check out the platform to the southeast. Here we find stairs leading up to a chemistry station where we find the proprietor, Dr. Soon. Quality Doctor, cams, right no here. A new file to open. Do you have a legitimate medical concern? Or is this about our facial reconstructive services? Facial reconstruction? What's that? Uh, it's Doc Crocker's specialty. If you're interested, talk to him about it. Just head through the door with our logo on it. Now, if you have an actual medical problem, speak up. So what kind of treatments are common around here? Bandaging wounds and cleaning radiation exposure are the most common things you outsiders usually ask for. That and kicking a chem habit. He said check out the logo on the nearby door. Going around the cigarette machine, we find a big logo on a red door leading down to the Mega Surgery Center. We find ourselves staring at a picturesque scene because we're standing at the top of the stairs. So heading down to the bottom, we find a small little space. Here we find blood splatter on the ground and a man in a lab coat wearing goggles. And of course, he's smoking. Hey, Doc. A new face. Strong, but not perfect. For a nominal fee, Doc Crocker can give you the looks you've only dreamed about before. Wait, what are you gonna do to me? I'm proposing surgery. Not just any surgery. Facial reconstruction surgery. Safe and instantaneous. New jawline. New eye color. Remove scars. Add scars. A new you. A more perfect you. That'd be great. You won't regret it. Just sit down in the chair. To change our appearance, we activate the chair. We can then go through the same menu we went through when making our character. And that's the last we hear of the Bobrov brothers and Dr. Soon and Crocker. Until we rescue Nick Valentine. After rescuing the detective and joining his detective agency, he invites us to explore his existing case files. We find one lying on his desk. This is the case file for Earl Sterling. Case, Earl Sterling's disappearance. Client, Vadim Bobrov. Another disappearing act to unravel. Earl Sterling, 25-year-old bartender at the Dugout Inn. One of the owners, Vadim Bobrov, noticed that Earl hadn't been into work for a few days. Security was called in. No investigation, of course. The Institute took him, is the unofficial word about town, like always. Vadim came into my office, half drunk, with a sob story about how he and Earl went way back, and that he just can't believe that Earl would get snatched up by the bogeyman. My gut says he is right. Earl didn't have any enemies, at least none with the motive enough to kill the guy. Not living with anyone either, so I'll have to see if Vadim or someone else at the dugout has his keys. I'd rather not have to explain to security why I was picking the lock on Earl's door if I slip up and get caught in the act. The Earl Sterling case. Apparently Earl just up and disappeared one day. No one's seen him since. With that, we begin the quest, The Disappearing Act. We must now track down the whereabouts of Earl Sterling. You know, I always got the sense Earl was interested in me. Figures he'd be the one to run off. Earl couldn't have been taken by the Institute, right? Why would they want Earl? Poor Ellie. Well, at least she still has Nick. Now, the case file said that Nick had planned to talk with the Bobrov brothers at the dugout inn to find a key to Earl's place so he wouldn't get caught by security. Heading back to the dugout inn, we can first talk with Vadim. Earl Sterling used to work here, right? Poor Earl. Gone just like that. Such a good bartender. Good friend. Oh, <laughs> terrible with women, mind you. Bull in China shop with them. You with Valentine's detective agency? 
I forgot to drop off Earl's key when I hired you people. Here, I hope you find out what happened. Security does nothing but yell at me for asking about it. I got a bar to run. Let me know if you want something. Nice accent, Boris. With that, he gives us the key to Earl's place. But let's see if anyone else knows anything about Earl Sterling's disappearance. Heading on over to Yefim. Did you know Earl Sterling? One of my brother's old friends. Oh boy. The way those two would go on about girls, you'd think Vadim is loud now. Earl was a horrible womanizer, and I warned him more than once to leave the staff and customers alone. But my brother always stood up for him. Honestly, kind of glad he's gone. Wouldn't shut up about the new face he was going to get at the major surgery center. Vain till the end. Anyway, did you want a room? What a rat hole. Well, Yafim didn't seem to like Earl Sterling. Is that motive enough to kill him? Finally, we can talk with Scarlet. Did you work with Earl Sterling at all? Oh, yeah, Earl. Ugh. I mean, I know I shouldn't speak ill of the missing, but that guy needed to get out more. You'd think a bartender would be eh, smooth, you know? Charming? Not Earl. He tried so hard, too. Way too hard. The real sad thing? He thought it was his looks. Kept talking about getting a new face over at the mega surgery. Wouldn't have helped. Anyway, I can take your order whenever. So the problem with Earl Sterling was his personality, not his looks. Almost sounds like he tried to hit on Scarlet one too many times. Could she have become furious and flung off the handle and accidentally killed the man? Well, perhaps we can find more answers when we explore his house. We find it really close to the dugout inn. Just head out the main door, turn right down the path, and it's the first house to the right. Now that we're inside, we need to search for clues. Strangely, the items inside are not set to owned. We can loot all of this without stealing. This is a bad sign. Does this mean the poor guy's dead? After looting the Kims and the cooler on the shelf, we can turn west to explore his living room. We find a toolbox on a cabinet and then a couch next to a dresser and a whole bunch of other containers, but they're all empty. It's not much here. His biggest stash seems to be a big pile of cigarettes and booze on a pedestal in the middle of his room. The man certainly wasn't living the high life here. Heading upstairs to the next level, we find more empty containers. We find a cigarette machine that's empty, but a dresser filled with ammunition, a little bit of money, and scrap. The biggest find is in the duffel bag at the foot of his bed. We can walk away with missiles and some plasma ammunition. The bed is also not set to own, which means we can sleep here and possibly even use this place as our own player home. Unless, of course, we find him alive and well, which is still totally possible, right? But wait a minute, we're here for clues. What did we miss? I didn't find anything. Heading back downstairs, we can revisit the living room, and upon closer inspection, we see a scrap of paper lying on the floor next to a folder and the couch. This is a surgery receipt. Mega Surgery Center. Dr. Crocker, resident surgeon. One reconstruction surgery, facial. Procedure to be performed upon clearance of final installment payment. Patient, Sterling Earl. And then we remember what Scarlet said. He was self-conscious about his looks, blamed his looks for his failures with women. He had talked with her about his plans to go to Doc Crocker for facial reconstruction surgery, and it looks like he did. Sounds like the next guy we need to talk with is Dr. Crocker. But when we head to his mega surgery center, we find the front door locked. Why is this door locked in the middle of daytime? Surely this is his best chance to get business. Let's try talking with Dr. Sun to get some answers. Do you know anything about this receipt? Let me see. Hmm. This is Dr. Crocker's deplorable handwriting, all right. Looks like Earl Sterling was one of his patients. The procedure noted here is mundane. Low-risk cosmetic work. Dr. Crocker never performed it, however. Said Earl vanished before he paid. Anyway, we should get back to your immediate medical requirements. Where is Doc Crocker? Last time I saw him, he had to get something out of the surgery cellar. Probably just had to wash some needles or move some storage around. Now, I must insist we talk about your medical needs. I need to get into the cellar, Doctor. What does this look like? A public outhouse? Uh, you know what? Don't answer. Why on earth would I let you down there? At this point, we can pass two speech checks to get what we want. Look, I need to get down there. 
Now, are you going to help me or not? No, no. There's no need for that. You want to visit a basement? Fine. Here. Just don't touch anything. Please. I'm investigating a missing person, Doctor. And I think the trail leads to your basement. A missing person? You're talking about Earl, aren't you? You can't honestly think... You know what? Fine. If it'll put the matter to rest. Here, go see for yourself. But if I find one instrument out of place, you'll be getting the bill. Or we can bribe him with a hundred caps. Could a hundred caps change your mind? A hundred caps? To visit our basement? Well, I guess there wouldn't be any harm. All right. Here, the key. Just don't touch anything down there, understand? Another way to get the key is to look towards the cellar. There we find a big smudge of blood. There's an awful lot of blood leading into the surgery center basement. Should try and find a way down there. After having seen the blood, we can mention it to Dr. Soon. But this is a much harder speech check. Care to explain all this blood leading to the cellar? Dr. Crocker must have tracked some fluids when he went down into the cellar. He's sometimes not as fastidious as I am between surgeries. Here, the cellar key. Go check for yourself. I'm sure you'll find there's nothing going on here besides medicine. With the key in hand, we can enter the cellar. Oh, Earl. You've... You've really been a handful, you know. But I think we're just about done. Our little mistake is finally going to be corrected. Oh, naughty naughty. You're not supposed to be down here, but that's okay. I can fix that. I can fix anything. Yeah, you fixed things, all right. Fixed yourself some time in a Diamond City jail cell. Jail cell? <laughs> you don't get it, do you? <laughs> Doc Crocker isn't going to jail. He's going to go back to his surgery, where people love him. And they love him because Doc Crocker never loses patience. He just makes people happy. Put down the gun, Crocker. It's over. Over? <laughs> for Doc Crocker? <laughs> Why would it be over for the brilliant surgeon everyone loves? Take it easy, Doc. Let's talk about Earl. I didn't mean to do it. You have to believe me. Doc Crocker is a brilliant surgeon. No one dies under his care. No one dies. What did you do to Earl Sterling, Doctor? What did I do? I didn't do anything. It was... Uh, it was Earl. It was Earl who didn't want to be happy. Good patients get a nice new face. Bad patients bleed all over the floor because they want to screw up their surgeon's life. So you were performing surgery and Earl didn't make it. Is that it? I uh, might have had just a bit of jet before operating. So I nipped a few arteries I shouldn't have. Who hasn't? But I'm a problem solver, you see. I knew if Earl disappeared, everyone would just think the Institute took him. Why would people think the Institute took Earl Sterling? That's what they do. That's what they've always done. As long as there's no body, everyone just assumes. And that's why Earl's body needs to go away. So that's what you were doing? Cutting Earl's body up? You can't just get rid of 200 pounds of cadaver without attracting attention. Fortunately, the butcher shop is close by. If their trash pile just happens to have an extra box of rotten meat every week, who would think to look too closely? You really think you can get away with this? Get away with this? <laughs> Don't you know who I am? I'm Doc Crocker! Doc Crocker never does anything wrong. And once this is all over, no one will have any reason to question that. Oh, screw this. Say hi to Earl for me. With that, he turns hostile, and we're forced to kill him. fix anything. <laughs> Alternatively, we can pass two difficult speech checks to say, You've killed a man, Doctor. You're going to pay for it. 
Put the gun down and come with me. I... I did it, didn't I? I killed a man. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> well, there's so much blood. So much blood all over me. <laughs> you made a mistake. But you can still do the right thing, Doctor. Just think this through. You're... You're right. There's one thing I can do. Only one thing is going to make this all better. I can fix anything. In which case he commits suicide. There's no way to resolve this without Dr. Crocker dying. But Dr. Soon hears the commotion and comes on downstairs. What's going on here? Is, is that Dr. Crocker? I think you owe me an explanation. What happened here? Take a look around for yourself. You'll figure it out. That's Earl Sterling's body, isn't it? You owe me an explanation, Doctor. Your partner was cutting Earl Sterling up into little pieces. Cutting him up into... why would he? Did you know what Doc Crocker was doing down here? Somewhere in the back of my mind, I knew he had gone through with the surgery. So, Earl didn't just vanish. The procedure went badly, and Dr. Crocker was just trying to cover it up. That explains a lot more than I'm comfortable with. Dr. Crocker always cared about his reputation, but this... this is inhuman! You didn't know. It's not your fault. Of course it's not my fault. That moron and his damn appearance over practice mentality. Now two lives have been lost. It's disgraceful! Well, it's over. That's that. It's over? The most well-respected surgeon in Diamond City is dead, his patient is in pieces, and all you have to say is, it's over? You let this happen, Doctor. You could have stopped this. You're... you're right. I should have known Dr. Crocker wasn't in any condition to continue practicing medicine. I should have known he killed Earl. What are you gonna do now, Doctor? Now? Now, I have a report to file, a mess to clean up, and a lot of explanations to give to our patients. You should get going. A medical professional should be the one to handle all this... contamination. Doc. I'll be informing Diamond City Security about what happened here. Everyone will know what Dr. Crocker did to Earl. All of the items here are still set to owned. We can't take him without stealing. But we can loot Doc Crocker's body. On his body, we find two keys. One to the cellar, and one to his own house. On Earl's body, we find another key to his house, in case we didn't get one from Vadim. And after looting it, the sole survivor has unique dialogue. Looks like it'll be a closed casket funeral. But um, tss. Well, now that we've got the key to Doc Crocker's house, we can go explore it, maybe learn a little bit more about this strange personality. We find his house really close to Earl's. Passing Earl's house and going across the walkway, we find Doc Crocker's house right next to the science center. Inside, we see that he must have been a pretty popular man. His living room has a couch, a chaise long, and four chairs set out. He has cigars, wine, and vodka laid out on his coffee table. What a socialite. I suppose we can see why he was so protective of his reputation. And unlike most people in Diamond City, he has a tidy store of food. He has more food on this one shelf than the Bobrov brothers have in their entire restaurant. To the north, we find some containers and Doc Crocker's terminal. After hacking the novice lock, we find four entries. The first is for Patient and Codman. We haven't met her yet. She tends to hang out in the upper stands. She is the woman with a short haircut wearing a full suit who hangs out at the Colonial Tap House. She and her husband own Codman Farms, which supplies meat to Choice Chops. Dr. Crocker treated his terminal almost like a servant robot. We can even imagine this thing having a sultry voice. Have a happy day, Dr. Crocker. Beautiful Ann Codman. Well, I suppose I should say the former beautiful Ann Codman. There's only so much we can do to reverse the ravages of time, even with the miracle of facial reconstruction. Still, a steady customer is the best customer. List of procedures done. Lip augmentation, eye tuck, nose straighten, several age mark removals, and lift work. Various, but who's counting? In the next one, 
patient Geneva. We remember that Geneva is Mayor McDonough's secretary. She is the one whom we have to buy our house key from if we purchase home plate. Such a perfect specimen. I almost hated to work on her, like damaging a fine portrait. Note, the smell of her hair is divine. She must use something for it. Solomon crafting soap products in addition to chems these days? I must ask him. List of procedures done. Birthmark removal against my protestations. <laughs> well, it's clear that Doc Crocker had a good appreciation for beauty. Still, kind of creepy. In the next one, patient Ellie Perkins, oh no! Did Nick's secretary come in here for facial reconstruction surgery? The detective secretary came for a consultation. We'll have to follow up with her, perhaps over drinks. Oh no! He was interested in her, and he just died. The only two men in Diamond City who were interested in poor old Ellie Perkins, Earl and Doc Crocker, are now dead. <laughs> and we have to go back to Ellie to tell her this. In the final one, patient Abbott? Now this one was a surprise. Old Abbott. Now there's a man of few words. List of procedures done. Nasty scar across the abdomen. Rebuffed any attempts to question where it was from. Easy enough to remove for a man of my talents, however. We met Abbott in my video about raider stories. Remember, he sent us to Hardware Town, which was infested with raiders, to get some green paint for the wall. Could he have gotten that horrible stomach scar when he tried to go to Hardware Town himself to get the paint? Perhaps he was injured by raiders, which may explain why he sent us to do it. Even though Doc Crocker is now dead, everything else in his home is set to owned. Which is strange, because Earl Sterling was dead when we explored his house, and yet we were free to loot it all. We find considerably more loot here. A couple of first aid kits, an ammunition box, and his house is much larger, with three floors. He had his own laundry installed, and on the third floor we find a small loft with a door to a roof. Much like home plate, he had a rooftop balcony, but we don't find any furniture out here. Now that the mystery is solved, we can tell the news to Ellie Perkins. So, you find out where Earl Sterling ran off to? Why was I looking for Earl Sterling again? Well, to help the folks down at the dugout end get some closure about their friend, for one. That, plus a pile of caps when it's all said and done. Earl's not doing a lot of running anymore. Being... chopped to bits by Doc Crocker will do that. Crocker killed Earl? Gone as long as he was, I figured maybe Raiders or the Institute, but... Crocker? Where's the Doc now? Rotting in a cell, I hope. Come on, Ellie. You can't really be that... naive. Naive? What are you... Oh. Well, he's rotten somewhere. Somewhere? What do you... Oh. He's dead. Now, can I get my caps? Crocker's dead too? <sighs> Goodness. What a mess. It was either him or me. I had to put him down. Goodness. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Here, take this. Sounds like you earned it. I'll send word along. Let everyone down at the dugout in know what happened. Shame it couldn't be better news. Thanks again for closing this one out. You know, I can't guarantee it'll be any brighter, but we did have another case lying around if you're interested. You remember that one, Nick? The case for Marty? I do. Some loony scheme to make off with a statue of a grasshopper or something. You're welcome to page through it if you'd like. It's in the folder on the cabinet. We find Marty Bullfinch's case file lying on one of his filing cabinets, but we already read this case file and completed the associated quest in my video, Who Was Shem Drown? The full story of Faneuil Hall and the Gilded Grasshopper. You can find a link to that video by clicking here. To finish off, we should probably go back to the dugout inn and give some closure to his former co-workers. Heading in and talking to Vadim. Thank you for finding Earl's killer. Can't believe the doctor would do such a thing. Oh well, at least we have liquor to drown our sorrows. Checking in with Yefim. I'm glad you found Earl's killer, but now my brother won't shut up about you. Anyway, do you need a room? And finally with Scarlet. Wow! I, I can't believe Doc Crocker killed Earl. Glad I only ever had to deal with Doc's son. Oh, uh, I should get your order. When we next return to Dr. Soon, we see that he's gone. Oh no, not another disappearing doctor. 
Heading down to the surgery center, we see that it's empty though. He's not here and he cleaned up the corpses. That must mean that he's in the mega surgery center. Heading downstairs, sure enough, we see Dr. Soon here. Doc. Oh, you. Uh, the cellar has been sanitized and ownership of the surgery has reverted to me. I hope you'll give us another chance. Actually, I was hoping you could do facial surgery. Uh, I suppose with Dr. Crocker deceased, someone needs to accommodate the less medically important procedures. Sit down in the chair and we'll get started. Now there's actually a bug here. When Dr. Soon takes over the facial reconstruction part of their business, the first time we purchase facial reconstruction off of him, it doesn't work. He doesn't take the 100 caps from our inventory and we can't click on the chair. So we have to do it again. I need a new face, Doc. Get in the chair, right over there. But the second time it works. He takes the bottle caps and we can access the chair. I've tried this on four different characters in modded and unmodded playthroughs and it happens every time. So if it doesn't work the first time, just talk to him again and Dr. Soon will perform facial reconstruction. And with that, we solve the mystery of the disappearance of Earl Sterling. We also meet a cast of great new characters, including Vadim and Yafim Bobrov, whose story is not yet done. We will learn more about the Bobrov brothers, and we will get to know everyone's favorite DJ, Travis Lonely Smiles, in tomorrow's episode. If you want to make sure that you don't miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week on a wide range of topics spanning all of the games. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook to keep up to date with any changes I need to make to my production schedule. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, when we get to meet the Confidence Man.